This is the way the National Hockey League plays. Uh, the successful teams play defense by playing offense. So the idea for us is the way to play defensive hockey is to occupy the offensive zone. So our philosophy is 70-30. 70 percent in the offensive zone, 30 percent in the defensive zone. So everything that, everything that we work on is based in that concept. The more we make you play defend, the more tired you are to try to create offense, and that's our philosophy. And we, we play with this type of philosophy also. We play with big risk to exit. So in other words, we are a direct pass team. We use the middle of the ice to, to, to exit, and we enter for the most part in a conservative, wide manner. So, if you look at here on the forecheck, these are the rules. On the, so everybody knows exactly who has what responsibility, and more important, we're, when, we, when we dump the puck, or what we call place the puck, we want, we want everybody on the ice to know who's ever carrying it and crosses center ice, we know exactly where it's gonna go. So if a forward's carrying it, we know where it's going to get placed. When a defenseman's carrying it, we know where it's going to get placed. So every time, we know exactly what we're going to do with the puck. So the role of the forwards is every time a forward dumps the puck, it's a safe side chip. It's two on the puck. The forward who dumped it is not a dump and watch. He hunts his own puck doesn't dump and watch and make the other guy do the job. When they get the, knee, the, the net, that's called a wheel. One forward chases, we don't get two. And we pressure every D to D pass every time. Okay, letter of rip, we'll just see some clips. Uh, sorry, the next one will be defenseman. So this is, this is the defenseman's role. We pinch the second pass on the boards. So if it goes D to D to wing, that's a pinch. We pinch the puck, not the man. Our job is to keep the puck pushed back below the goal line. Don't pinch the man and go for the hit and let the puck go by you. We have a very strong side gap. We want our puck side defenseman to stay up tight as he can. And we always punch the puck back down. If we can't get the puck, then we want it punched back down. So have a look at these clips, you'll see. So here, D'Agostini chips it and goes and gets his own puck. There's the two. Right now, we retain it, and then we'll show you what we do offensively to create puck possession. Here's another one, chipped, pressure, they go D to D, or try to. Second man's in very quickly like that. So we get it stopped and then maintain full possession of the puck. Here we are here again. Two on the chip. First guy, second guy quick. We want our second guy to beat their second guy in. Here we are here again. On the wheel, stop. So you can see on the wheel, one guy chases, we take the boards away, so one pass doesn't beat two men. So the one time we're under control is when it gets in the trapezoid, we have discipline on our forecheck. One, when the puck gets to the trapezoid, one goes over. Okay? Here we are here again, stop. So you can see here, we're on a wheel. If our second guy was flying in there, one pass beats two guys, they exit easy. When we cut off our routes, let her go, there you are. See how he cuts off his route? Pick it up, in the net. I think the other thing too that's really important in all of these clips you see where we 
dispossess the other team. And it's really important from a, a checking point of view. And this is part of what a presentation I did in, uh, in Calgary for Hockey Alberta. If you stay position on all of these things, if you watch when we check, our guys in these clips do an unbelievable job with stick and body position. Even Bergman, where he knocked that puck down on the half wall with his stick on the ice. If, he's, if guys are skating around with their sticks on the hips, you have no chance. But stick on puck leads you into body, and then in a lot of these situations, we, we hammered LA in the playoffs. We were really physical, both sides, but we really punished them hard. But we were equally good with our sticks. Our philosophy is stop, just stop. Stick in the next lane. Are you able to back that? So we always say stick in the next lane. So it's not just going and finishing your check, like they're talking about body contact in amateur hockey. It's all about putting your stick in the next lane. So now, now it's a defenseman that has the puck. So again, when a defenseman has it, when a forward has it, everybody knows it's going to be dumped into the same corner, okay? When a defenseman has it, now everybody knows it's going to go into the weak side. <coughs> So you watch when our defensemen get it. Stop, that's Petrangelo. Everybody knows it's in the weak corner, so we're already anticipating that it's gonna to go to the far side of the ice. It's gonna be on the boards, and it's going to the far side of the ice. So already we've loaded up over on this side of the ice, anticipating, and then we pick it off. So depending on who has possession, there's no hesitation <coughs> on where the puck's gonna go. We don't, want to, we don't want to dump the puck for the sake of dumping it. When we dump it or place it, we want the puck back for sure. There it is again, that's a defenseman. So everybody knows to load up to the far side of the ice. We stack up the forecheck. We're in perfect position. Okay, so everybody understands that? Can't. Yes. Do you guys play this way because of the roster and the type of players you have, or do you believe like this is the most effective way to play the game in general? Um, well, we believe this is the most effective way, but it wouldn't matter who we had. Yeah. This is this this is a philosophy that probably a dozen teams have. Um, maybe not the detail that say us in Detroit, San Jose have, but or in Boston, but pretty similar. Now, neutral zone forecheck. This is probably in the National Hockey League, the neutral zone forecheck is the one area that changes for different teams. Some teams have a strict one, two, two. Some have a, like for instance, Boston has a one, two, two slide. We have a one, two, two lock. Um, depending on on your roster, depending on your philosophy, Nashville's neutral zone forecheck is different than ours. Um, uh, you know, things, each team is different. It's probably the one area, Ray, that changes on teams. So, we have, um, we used to have two, which is on the board now. Um, we used to have one, when we chipped the puck out of our zone, which is this one here, and then we had one when we were in a delay. So this is the, the one when we when we chip it out, we want to really be aggressive. So we're in our zone, we chip it out of our zone, we want to be very aggressive. Now we have another one where the other team has clear possession and it's more of a passive forecheck. So um, just to let her rip there. So this is, these are chip outs. We want that first guy to be as aggressive as we can, get right up. And then we want all five guys as close together. We want to see a real connection between the five guys. So we want to see all five really connected here. We don't want to get spread out or spaced out. So that's our, when the team goes more rigged wide like that, that's our D's lane to put responsibility. We've locked on the middle there, we're over top of the center, so our D has that wide lane. So here we are, chip out. So we want all five guys connected. <clears throat> you see, 
So we want to make sure that we don't have a gap, that they are able to come through between blue line and blue line very easily. That's what you want to make them do is dump it. So here we are here, we're up, we're up hard, we're connected, everybody's together, and then he's not able to skate, we've got them standing still. Now they have to regroup, they really don't have a play, anybody, they don't have any speed through the neutral zone. You see we're blocked right over top of the center there, and we haven't come off of that lock, so that's why the weak side D is out, ready to go. Now some teams play with their second wave of forwards sliding across the ice, and some teams lock on, we lock on, so there's no gray area. So as you see, they got no numbers on attack. So that centerman that curled through the middle, that backside D picked them up, so it's almost like a one three one? No, not the D. That the wasn't D. the D? No, that was the forward. Oh, okay. That looked like the offside D, sorry. No, that's a forward. Okay. So here we are here again. We're up. <coughs> see how we lock on right there? Here we are here again. Same thing here, there's a turnover, we lock on the middle of the ice, turn it back. Play on goal, we're up, now we're looking to lock on, you see how we come over the top? So Ken, do you have your, kind of your third forward up ice always is the lock guy locking on, your F2's up. Our lock on guy is dictated by their first D to D pass. We come up the ice as a group of five, as soon as they go D to D, that sets the lock. So if they go, who's ever in the middle of the ice once the first D to D pass is on, you're the locker, you stay locked on. Again, we dumped it out, we're up very fast on people. There, see how we locked in the middle, right there. Okay, we'll just keep going to the next. This is off the delay stuff, so just simply go over there and see this is going. Here you are here again. See how we lock on the middle there? So there's a D to D. Now see how we come over? We're right on top of Ablicator, who was in the middle of the ice. Okay. So just go back and so here's here's the mystery of our hockey club. Here's the reason we win. Um, everybody has a game plan, everybody has a coaching philosophy, but nobody plays like we do on what's called track reload. Track reload is track reload is back checking. And one of the reasons that we win is there is no gap, you're gonna see this, there's no gap between our forwards and defensemen. And when you look at the second word there, all five players on one half of the ice, when the puck is turned over, you're gonna see these on the clips. We want all five guys on half ice. So we want all five players on 40 feet of ice. All five players in the pitcher, and we don't dictate, lock this guy, pick up this guy. We just say, if you come back hard, it'll sort itself out. Our defensemen take the one-on-one -on -one and they take the speed, and our forwards work inside our defensemen so they don't have any, any uh, guessing or gliding. Our weak side defenseman has the middle drive, and our forwards are responsible for any trailing players. Okay, so as, as you watch the video, just count numbers. Five hard strides mean once the puck train turns over, once you've turned it over in the offensive zone, 
the neutral zone, you have five hard strides. All three forwards have to take to catch up to the play. So we want we want the forwards caught up to the play by the center red line. Okay, have a look. Watch this. We have a play at the net. Turns over, watch this. One, two, three, four, five. Look, stop. The guys that were on attacking the net have already come back over top <coughs> to pick up the puck. So these were the guys that made the play on the net. They took five hard strides and caught up to the play by the red. Okay, watch again. Here you are here. Now watch. We're in the offensive zone. We're trying to score. Put the brakes on. Look. All stop. All five guys on one half of the ice. What play they got? The one on one. They got nothing. We got numbers back and we counter quickly. Here you are here again. We're four checking. We're on top of them. Now they pick it up. We're over top of them. Right back out. Here you are here. We're off of a four check. We make a play in the net. Watch. Stop. Watch this guy right there. There's 74. This is why we win all the time. Watch him. He's on the goal line. Watch this. Every player has to play like this. We have stop. When 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 we coach in practice, we have coaches, we run nothing but transition drills. So whatever we start, we finish the other way. We start with defensive zone coverage, we finish with offensive attacks. If we start, if we have offensive attacks, we finish with these zone coverage. So everything we practice in any team drill has transition. We don't just go break out, counter, and finish. Anything we start with, we finish. So mentally, we stay sharp. But the deal with us is that we have coaches who literally watch practice and they count these strides. And they're on people's asses if you don't do this stuff. So I'm running a drill, Ray's watching a player. If he sees a guy glide back in transition, he's right over to him. So watch this, Detroit, we've had an attack. We're over top, stop. Four in the pitcher. That's what we want to see every time at the red line. Four, not three. Four in the pitcher. No gap. Here we are here. Look at us come back over top. So our, our attitude, this is the term we use. Above and deflect, not below and chase. That's how we play. Now you can have all the personnel you want in the world, but the teams that play like this, who demand this of their players, they're the ones that win in the national hockey. This is how you create offense. You create offense by track and reload. And, and, you know, individual tactics, again, as Perron's stick here, he could work his way back, but if his stick's in the air at all, Detroit's got possession. So, you know, with all of our system stuff and, and then the stuff that Hitch does, does in terms of demanding the effort, this is the, the stick position, the angling, the, all of the application of skill gives you an opportunity to play offense. Here we are here, we're trying to play in the offensive zone. Stop, watch when it comes up. Just keep going a little bit. Look at this, there you are. There's your four, all on half of the ice. We don't care, you want to try to pass the puck through us, good luck. Right here, here we go, watch this come. We catch the plate. Look. See that? Okay, defensive zone coverage. Um, everybody has a different system. Some have swarm, some have all kinds. Our key is, what we do is we, we have this philosophy. Let the one-on-one -on -one take place. Get away from the one-on-one. -on -one. Don't allow one puck carrier to beat two checkers. Don't stare at the one-on-one -on -one with your second wave of checking. When the puck is on the boards, we cut off the top and cut off the bottom. So that means that we don't allow a play behind the net and we don't allow a play off the boards. 
wingers and centers are allowed to switch. We want to get our center back in there if possible. But we, if the wingers the first guy back, that's fine. But we got winger and center switches as quickly as possible. The D-man, the rule is simple. If you have position in front of the net, if you have position in front of the net, you got to box out. If he has position in front of the net, you got to front the puck. Don't go and box out with a guy that has position on you. Get ahead of him, box it out, or front the puck and block it down. One change we're going to make this year. When the puck goes to the top, we're going to play it as five one-on-ones. So when a defenseman has the puck, when the opposition, we're going to play five one-on-ones. So we sort out coverage, any movement, everybody knows what their responsibilities are. The man have two down low, who's got the guy in the high slot, who's got the two Ds. So we're going to we'll have five one-on-ones right away. Okay? What? Why the change? Because defensemen are... There's a lot of movement coming from teams' defensemen, interchange of positions, uh, switch outs. Uh, there's a lot of three on two high getting played right now, and uh, we just need to be tighter on the coverage. So we're not allowing the three on two on high or the, the switch outs or interchange by the defensemen, the jumping in through gaps. We're not allowed it anymore. You put puck goes out to the point, everybody knows game on, one on one. Okay, let her go. So here you are. There's our second man in. We've cut off the top. We exit. Just, just stop for a second. Okay. So this is just go. Can you go back to that clip, sorry? Not sure. You can. We've got exits anyway. So. Okay. So watch. This is how we play on exits. We always exit through the middle of the ice. We don't bang it off the board. Stop. That play, that way, we don't want wingers banging pucks off boards. We don't care. If we turn it over and it ends up in our net sometimes, big deal. Nine times out of ten, that's a good play. We want the puck in the middle of the ice as much as possible. So we play, that's when I said to you, we play with risk. We play with risk when we exit. We don't want to be a team that chips and chases. We don't want to be a team that chips it out and has to check. I can't stand playing check and recheck hockey. So we want possession. We'll take our chances. We'll, we'll show you examples how we clear the zone to create space. Um, but that's how we exit, through the middle of the ice. OK, so here we are here again. Puck's in the corner. Now stop. Right there is going to be, when that puck goes to the point, that puck's going to be now, that's game on five one-on-ones. Okay, down low. Now just stop. See how Stewart's got the top cut off here? So we don't want the puck going back to the point. Puck on the boards, we cut off the play to the top. Would you have the winger there get his ass to the boards and be able to look to the middle? Or so it doesn't go by him if that way guy chips it back up. More skates on the boards. More yeah, skates on the boards. Doesn't it doesn't matter. Could be ass on the boards, could be face on the boards, we don't care. Just get your skates on the boards. I don't care how you are. Okay. Don't allow that thing if you gotta put it in your teeth. Yeah. Don't allow it to go up there. So Detroit with Babs and uh, Joel Quindle in Chicago would tell their guys heels to the boards. Yeah, because that's what we did with the Bears. We cut that down and put their heels to the yeah. boards, yeah. But guys aren't used to that because they feel they're giving up the point yeah. in the middle of the ice. Middle of the ice. Well, and that's what happens is, is the risk you have is, morning here, but if he gets too far outside too early, and the other part of the, the thing there that, that we've done a good job with Hitch is, is when that guy, if, that, if they were to bring the puck up out of the corner and their player had no, was not under duress, he wasn't being checked, he had his head up, good control, then Stewart wouldn't be as aggressive outside as he is now. But because it's contested puck, we're, we're really in a great position there. And even if the Detroit guy got up and started to come up the wall with Petrangelo all over him, we feel like Stewart can be way more aggressive outside. But if he gets outside too early and they have good possession, he doesn't see the D behind him slide five feet to the inside. Now it's a direct pass to, to really good ice inside. So 
there is a bit of a balancing act there, but anytime we can put pressure on, we sure want to cut off the top. But our, our philosophy is as soon as we see numbers, as soon as we see the number, then cut off the top, cut off the bottoms on. So no, that, sorry. No numbers. If we are looking at crests, then we fold into the middle. Yeah. And that's when we want the one on one to take place, and everybody's got coverage responsibilities. We're, we're anticipating that they could make a play back to the point. So he has to then slide out and play the, basically the two on one with yeah. the D-man and the mm -hmm. forward coming. Okay. Yeah. And again, I mean, we're willing to take some risk to try and squish the, the zone and shrink it and expect, that if, like Kitch said, if, if they make, we, either we make a mistake or they make an unbelievable play, you know, so be it. But we, we turn over way more pucks by doing this than being passive and waiting standing around waiting for them to make a mistake. Our philosophy is they have one, we have two, they have two, we have three, they have three, we have four. So that's going to be the one-on-one -on -one game. So here you come, it's on the boards, there's the cutoff. Now, that guy's in possession, so that's, that's where we've got to make sure we've got everybody folded out. And that demon rotated right down on, on the corner. Does that sometimes you want your sentiment to go back down to Yeah, that? well, it, we, we would prefer that the defenseman go back down behind the net and the center iceman slide back. Yeah, down. be the second wave. So ideally, here we prefer, we would prefer that the, the defenseman get back underneath quickly. But he was on it pretty quick. Yeah. And we would prefer also that Bacchus doesn't come off of when they cycle the top bit. That he's going to stay with Kopitar there. Yeah, okay, that's that's what the pitch point. talks about is check and recheck. So you check somebody up the wall, they cycle it, you chase the puck instead of staying with your guy. Yeah. So here we are. Here we're cutting off the bottom, cutting off the top. Stop. There you are. So now he's got to make a hell of a play. See, we've got the bottom cut off right here. So your weak side when you're there. He's got the freedom to come over, obviously, to cut that ice in half again. Yes. And that's kind of, he almost protects the middle of yeah. the pressure there. Yeah. We collapse. So, yeah, they got possession, but what's going on? They're on the outside. And no shot. No shot. That's it through the middle. Here we are here again. There's the one-on-one. -on -one. The puck game on. See, see McDonald. Just back up. Look where McDonald is. Go back. There you watch where he, watch where he came from. What? So he sees he sees he sees numbers being checked. Um, so watch. He sees the number being checked. As soon as he sees this right here, there's numbers. Look where he is. He's on the boards. Right there. If that was a crest, he'd be off the boards. Great stick position there again, turns Kutcher back down. He's cut it off again, see that? And there's that risk we play with. Stop. We don't want our winger chipping it off the boards. I mean, there's times he does, and we'll, we'll show you when we do it. But even when we chip it off the boards, it's to maintain possession. We'll show you how we Well, he moved to the backside D there. Yeah, but yeah. We, sometimes you panic, you flip it off the boards. Well, we want, we still want to be able to get the puck there. So here comes the D zone exits. So three below the goal line on every breakout. We want our low forward as close to our defenseman. So what we do is to, here's the, here's the rhyme that we use, to create space we push the pace. So what push the pace, when you hear Pierre Maguire say, we're pushing the pace, he's full of shit. So, <laughs> so he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Push the pace means that the weak side winger splits the two defensemen to create space in the middle of the ice to exit. Okay? So that's push the pace to create space. Our weak side defensemen, we want joining the rush and we're always low and slow in the middle to the point 
Well, we're fine if our center iceman is standing still. Okay, so watch. Exit off coverage. So here you are. Oh, nice pass. Here we are here, we're in coverage. Okay, you're gonna see some better ones here that end up pushing the pace. So here we are here, we're going out the weak side. And there's our weak side defenseman joining right now. He's in the middle of the ice actually. Let her go again, off of coverage again. So one of the things we also demand, because we want to play such a tight gap here with Petrangelo on the entry, that we rely on our four, first forward back to, to initiate the breakout a lot, <coughs> as opposed to his partner coming over or whatever. So Berglund, you'll see this a lot if you see our first forward back off in the center. His job is at some point to act like a defenseman and get the puck going out the weak side, especially if it's come in on that, that one strong side. So here we are here again. Stop. Who's created the space? David Prawn was the left winger. You don't even see him in the picture. So that's how we're able to exit through the middle. Okay, you watch again. <clears throat> 57, stop. See him on the bottom right there? Okay, watch when we get the puck here. He's not there. Stop. So we send one out, play with four. Okay, so that's how we exit. Look at the space he's created in the neutral zone. That's how, that's how you create speed. You create speed with space. So here we are here, we're coming out this side of the ice. Stop. So the, the space is created, the space is created by the weak side winger. Come out of coverage. Look, stop. See Lagenburner coming across? Now ideally, well, there's no room to move the puck. We would like to move it to the weak side. But if we happen to give it to the left winger there, we still want to find a way, stop, to maintain possession. There we go. There's the space. Now we were able to exit. Now we enter. Now this is when we have, when we have possession. So now we have the puck. Okay, what we want when stop when we want the puck when a team dumps the puck in on us we always want four in the area so we can make two quick plays to exit. So when you just watch these in general, watch how many watch how close four and sometimes five players are. Watch, just count numbers, count white numbers here. Again, there's Berglund as our first four back, acting as a defenseman, picking up the puck. See this? All four guys right in the area. All four guys within 10 feet. Here we go here again. Right there, just count. Look at this. Right here. Five. See the space we create off of their pressure? Here you are, here, right here. Stop. Look. Bang, bang, gone. So when we see the puck dumped in, we want as many people close to the puck as we can. So we can make all these little plays to make a big play to exit. Here you are here, one, two, three, four. Little play, exit, control. Another one. Look at us all back, little play, one, Two, three, four. Now there's Revo coming across. Stop. He makes the space. We come through under possession all the way to the top of the circles. Here you are here again. All little plays. Little. Now watch back. That's what we mean about stop and blow and slow. <coughs> the center iceman is the distributor of the puck. 
Here's David, like Ray saying, goes back first, acts as defenseman, out the weak side, clear possession, away we go. We want the puck in the middle of this. Weak side defenseman goes back and gets it. There's the low and slow in the middle, and we're gone. Same thing here in an exit. If but Berglund isn't patient, we have no chance to get it out. But because he's patient, we get it out. See here, stop. See how we create the space by the offside winger pulling the defenseman back out? Last one here, low and slow. Look at that. He created all that space. Okay, attack. So here's here's how we play. We play triple drive four up. We don't delay. We don't have any of that stuff. We play triple drive. So when you watch us attack, we we like I said to you before, we use outside speed. Middle drive is always inside the weak side defenseman. Fourth man up, and we fill three lanes. Okay? So here, you can see this. There's the, there's the inside drive. Boom. Here you are. Stop. Stop. So the, there's a perfect example of our attack. <coughs> inside drive the defenseman. The right winger plays level to the puck carrier. The weak side winger plays level, so the lateral plays always there. And then the trailer is the fourth man, never the third man. <clears throat> now the key for us, stop, our philosophy is the shooter takes care of the drivers. The shooter takes care of the drivers. So your job is to put the puck onto the net, we'll, and we'll show you what we mean by that. But if you shoot it wide, you better not be the guy going for the skate. You're the first guy fucking back every time. Here we are here, stop. Well, there's a perfect example. Here we are here again. Now we have options. Like here's a little tight turn option. We practice all of these. Stop, let her, let her go. There's the tight turn option. Now we know we tight turn to below the hash marks. We have all these tight turn options. So we hit late people and we create scoring chances off of over back checking. <coughs> here you are here again, middle drive, two on one game, possession, same thing here. Middle drive. Here you are here again. Tight turn. Late people in the net. Same thing here. Lateral. Now our philosophy offensively is if you gain the blue line, stop. We want you to make a play. Don't fucking gain the blue line and dump the puck. Don't, don't even think about doing that. If they have the blue line, then you got to play the two-on-one chip game. But you make, you get the blue line, let's make a play. So we have all kinds of plays. There's the lateral play. Here's another one right here. Inside two-on-one. So there he's got the gap. You chip it, keep going. Okay, everybody get that? Okay, winning hockey on counters is the three-quarter ice game. When you have a team on the three-quarter ice game, that it's, in a lot of times it's game over. The three-quarter ice game is a game where all they're doing is they're tired and they're chipping the puck out. And our game plan on the chipping the puck out is always to find three lanes quickly, 
and we want to use the far side of the ice. We want to get the puck to the far side of the ice and catch them in either changes or they can't recover their ice. There you go. So just watch. Quick up. Far side. Stop. Stop. Look where they are. They're all at their bench. Right on top of them again. Far side of the ice. Quick up. Quick up. Far side. Fill three lanes. Quick D to D. Right up. Fill three lanes. Here you are here. Right up. Right up. Fill three lanes. Now, we've got Detroit on the chip game. We're right up on them, right now. Here we are here again. Same thing. Right up. Odd man rush. Here you are here again. Right up. Catch him in changes, fill the lanes. Okay. And on delay counters, so you're not in a you're not in a chip out game. You're in a delay. It could be a change, it could be uh, it could be anything. What we try to do is trap the first guy, same thing. We try to make sure we isolate the first guy, and then that opens up the weak side of the ice force. So here we are. Suck the first guy out of position, get him on the weak side, and then that opens up there. Same thing here. Bring him over, find the weak side of the ice, and away we go. Have the patience to trap him. Bring them, bring them, now you got them, now away you go. That opens up space. Pull the first guy out of position when you're in the delays. So here we are, we're in a delay, get them over. Now you got them, weak side of the ice, right up. Same thing here, suck them over, now you've got them, now he's out of position, now you're going right up. Now you got 40 feet of ice to work for. Same thing, get him over. There he is, he's over. Now the weak side of the ice is wide open. Now you can even use it again, you've got him. Here you are here. Come on over, come on over, come on over. Now there, now you got him. Okay, everybody clear on it so far? Our philosophy in the offensive zone. The third line, Nesson. Nesson is north. That means you're going towards the net. East means you're using the width of the ice. South means you're going back towards the defenseman. North means you're going to the net. Nesson, north at the net, east-west on possession, south back to the D, north back to the net. So our philosophy is use depth and width. You'll see us really skate on the cycle, not stick handle. And the traffic has to be at the net before the puck. <clears throat> we got better clips for next year. The other philosophy is this is the best offensive hockey you can get. You have in order winning hockey, winning hockey is second man quick. On a one-on-one, -on -one, who's got the second guy in there quick? So there's the one-on-one. -on -one. Where's the second guy? Right there. Here's another one-on-one. -on -one. Our second guy beats their second guy all over the ice here. Every time it's up for grabs, our second guy's winning the race. Now some teams play with a philosophy of three-man cycle. We use two on the cycle and our third forward's a shooter. We activate our weak side defensemen all over the place, but we always hold an F3 shooter. And you'll see these clips. Watch where our shooter is. He's always in position. See that? 
Now, some teams put three in there. We prefer to activate our weak side defensemen. See how he's holding position? Here we are here again. There's the north. There's the east-west. There's the puck protection. There's the, there's, there's the occupying the width. There's the skating on the cycle. Now watch how they have to play. Watch Orpik here. He's dead. 